it's in Howard or on Wurundjeri land. They've all cared for and managed these lands in a sustainable and responsible manner for many tens of thousands of years. When the initial settlers came across the Western districts, they commented that the axles of their carts and their horses sank into the friable soils and turned over bushels of bulbs, Murnong, and the grasses reached their saddles. In other, work, in other areas, they described the land as like a gentleman's park. We need to respond to their welcome to country by also truly caring for this country. We have much to learn from them, not only on their land, farming and fire practices, but also about their governance, which led to no major wars across this continent for many tens of thousands of years. I offer my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging, and to all of their mobs, and to our people from other mobs attending today, and to all of you who have logged in from near and far. Hi, I'm Rob Gardner, and I help support these meetings with Chris and Howard. Today, my particular thanks to Chris, who is managing all the activities in the background. Firstly, some housekeeping. Tonight's presentation and Q&As will be recorded and available to download in a few days time on the Renew website. If you've got any technical problems or general comments, please use the chat button, which is the bottom left on most computers. If you have a question about questions, enter them at any time using the Q&A button, which is in the bottom right. Keep the questions fairly short if possible, please. We usually have a lot of questions, so we'll probably consolidate similar ones and then cover as many as possible in the time available. If some of the names are new to me. Maybe you're new to Renew, uh, which was formed in 1980 to promote sustainability in all its forms. It's best known for its two magazines, Renew and Sanctuary, but also events such as uh, Sustainable House Day and Speed Date and Expert. Also EV fairs and attending many other fairs and events. However, it also has a significant research section and a lobbying group, free modeling packages, Sunolator and Tankulator, and also an advisory service aimed not only for households, but for business and governments. Tonight, we are very fortunate to have Sharma Islam from Deakin University in Geelong to make a presentation before an extensive Q&A session. Dr. Sharma Islam is a senior lecturer in electrical engineering at Deakin. She's a leading researcher in the areas of IoT for smart energy applications, optimum energy management, energy data analytics, and smart grid security. In 2015, she completed her PhD from ANU. She's been an investigator in a number of arena funded projects. She's received the Future Women's Leader Award from Monash University in 2017, and also been awarded the Victorian Fellowship 2019 for her contributions to scientific innovations in Victoria. For this project, she was funded by the Geelong City Council to implement a pilot scale demonstration of energy use optimization technologies. And to, tonight she'll explain the details of this program and the findings they found from such an analysis of household usage, control and optimization, and the substantial savings achieved in 2022. So that's over for, all for me, and I'll pass you over to Sharma. Thanks, Robin, for the uh, introduction. Um, and many thanks to Renew Melbourne Branch for giving me the opportunity to talk about this project um, about which I'm very passionate. Um, uh, so I'll sh uh, start sharing my slides, um, but I would also like to uh, make a note, like if for any reason, if you lose my, lose my audio um, at some point, please uh, put a note in the chat window so that like um, I can I can uh, I can take an alternative of that. 
Um, so I'll just share my screen. I hope um, all of you can see my slides. If you just make it full size, Shama. Yes, uh, I'm making it full size. Um, yeah, now it's full size. Can you see it full size now? Yes. Thank you. Um, so um, uh, today I'll be talking about uh, this energy optimization project for Geelong households. Um, so um, um, when I started uh, researching in the area of energy systems and um, more on the energy efficiency uh, sides, then um, one thing that uh, always came to my mind that um, what is causing some power outages um, um, which I have experienced uh, over, let's say, 2016, 2017 kind of time period. And um, I realized that um, we have enough generation to meet our demand. But what is happening there, like if everyone is using their appliances at the same time, uh, the distribution line, which uh, provides the electricity to our home, the, they, uh, their capacity may not be sufficient to manage that load. So it's more like a traffic congestion problem. Um, so um, what can be done in this regard? Uh, I've realized that there are many appliances in the house whose operation can be different to alternative times. For example, um, you, you, can, you can choose your washing machine to work at a certain period of time uh, so that like it, um, it manages the washing and uh, prepares the clothes for you um, within a certain time of the day. It may not be true for all appliances such as stoves or even like heating, cooling in some cases, but for many appliances, it may be applicable. And if we can do this kind of scheduling, um, we can manage the electricity demand more effectively. As a result, we can reduce the load demand during um, peak hours, which is usually the late afternoon to early evening periods. Um, and um, you may know that the tariff uh, can be higher during these peak demand hours, especially if you're in a um, using a time of use tariff. And in that case, if the load demand can be reduced during those high tariff hours, the electricity bills for the users can be reduced as well. Um, another benefit is like if uh, these appliances can be scheduled uh, at op optimal times, then um, the occurrences of electricity outages can be reduced, which is a very significant benefit if we can um, if you can achieve this optimal energy use and it can serve as a way of demand response. Now, um, the other question uh, that came to my mind that how does solar play in this in this uh, energy optimization problem? Um, if you talk about like uh, making households energy efficient, the first thing people think about is um, uh, installing solar panels in their houses. Um, and obviously that's a very good way to achieve economic savings and um, providing a sustainable way to meet the energy demand. However, um, a user may not extract the maximum benefits of solar panel installation if the user does not have sufficient load demands to consume that solar generation. And often the maximum demand periods do not coincide with the maximum solar generation periods. You may have your maximum demand during late evening hours whereas your maximum solar generation occurs during morning periods. So an optimization algorithm will be required, which can schedule the appliances during high solar generation periods. And it has to be done optimally um, and in an automated manner, rather than like uh, suggesting the users that you can um, use your appliances in this time or that time. So the idea is to promote more self-consumption and less exports. Um, this is an important consideration for the distribution network operators, um, because we may have uh, heard about this, that the distribution network operators um, often uh, try to put a limit on the export the solar panels can have to the grid, um, because this helps them to manage the network voltage issues and so on. So um, if we can uh, reduce the exports during um, the, uh, the 
the morning hours, that can be another uh, co-benefit as well. Um, one thing to note is that we need to focus the solar generation accurately if we want to achieve this optimization um, in, a, in a true sense. Otherwise, our optimal solutions may be less accurate. So um, that is something to consider. Now, um, we have agreed that um, we need to have an intelligent algorithm that can schedule the appliances based on the fact that when our solar generation is maximum, so that um, these appliances are able to use the solar generation um, during most periods of the time. But how these can be integrated in a household? We all know that in Victoria, each house is equipped with a smart meter, maybe at the taxpayer's money, but uh, they are there. So uh, these smart meters are intelligent computation and communication devices, um, but they're primarily used for dealing purposes. So though we have smart meters at our homes, we may not be um, realizing the true potential of these smart meters, what they can do for us. Um, so these intelligent optimization algorithm can be integrated with the smart meter and which can control the user appliances within the house. So this algorithm will be able to coordinate with external data servers um, for services such as weather solar generation forecasting, and it can use that existing smart meter communication infrastructure for that. So there is a benefit of integrating this algorithm with the, with the smart meters that we have our home. So Overall, we are going to achieve uh, an Internet of Things or IoT-based um, energy efficiency solution um, by, by allowing all the appliances within the house to be able to talk with the smart meters directly and the smart meters smart meter to be able to control those appliances. Um, so overall, uh, everything talks with each other, which is the key idea of uh, an IoT-based solution. So um, we started working on this problem um, and uh, initially some proof of concept work was taken by um, Deakin University's final year project students. Um, and when we found that th there are some results coming in and we have a confidence that this might work in a real scenario, we approached um, um, Geelong City Council through Clean Tech Innovations Geelong by submitting a proposal um, and um, received the funding um from from that uh, scheme so um at the beginning i would like to acknowledge the support of the city of Great, greater geelong the geelong manufacturing council and the state government for funding this pilot study for households in geelong through clean tech innovations geelong um, and i would uh, like to uh, acknowledge the continuous support from uh, nicholas phillips um, he's the technical head of sales in itron australia uh, who provided valuable advice regarding the implementation architecture and who helped me with the integration of weather forecasting platform. So uh, Nick and I have been working on this idea for nearly about five years now. So um, we thought about ex expanding this uh, collaboration further and um, making this uh, idea a reality. So this is the story, the background story behind how we started this project. So at the beginning, um, uh, we wanted to recruit some participants uh, uh, in the houses where we want to test our uh, prototype. So we circulated a simple survey in a number of media platforms from the Geelong City Council and Geelong Sustainability. Um, there we asked some questions about the electricity use patterns and whether the users are interested in automation products. For example, we asked like what type of appliances the user has, whether they have dishwasher, dish, uh, um, washing machine, tumble dryer, whether they have solar panels, battery storages. Also like what type of ty tariff structure they have, whether it's flat rate or time of use tariff. We also wanted to ask like if there will be someone at the home during daytime um, who will be able to control and monitor the appliances, um, how they are working and so on. And usually because it was the COVID time when we circulated that survey, it was, um, it was an easy answer because um, usually there was um, at least one person at the home during the day um, for whom we have circulated this uh, survey. Um, however, the most important uh, thing uh, 
that came out of the survey is like whether the users are happy to allow flexibility in their everyday appliance usage patterns. Not everyone will be able to allow that flexibility, but um, for our uh, prototype to test, we need uh, some of those cases where users um, will be able to accommodate those changes. Um, and then um, based on the user responses to these pre-screening questions, we selected 20 households, but at the end, only eight households could participate um, because of different issues, which I'll talk later on. Um, and, uh, and for these uh, 20 households, we have prioritized uh, uh, users who has solar panels. Uh, this is because we could not find any user who has time of use carry. So our prototype to um, give you cost savings, we need uh, the user to have uh, either solar panels so that they can get the cost savings from using solar generation, or we need uh, users to have time of use tariff so that we can schedule the uh, appliances during a low price time period so that um, uh, the users do not consume more energy during high tariff period. High tariff period. Um, however, um, if the user does not have solar panel and has a flat rate tariff, there may not be any cost savings for the user, though uh, there can still be electricity savings, um, uh, especially during uh, the peak, uh, peak demand hours. Um, so um, other uh, features that we have uh, about our participants uh, is that 75% of them uh, has not used any home automation before and 50% of them has not used any energy consumption monitoring app. So you may imagine that um, at the early stages of the project, we needed some time to uh, educate our users about um, how we are going to apply this uh, energy optimization, what we are going to do, what sort of um, um, facilities we need to use, such as the Wi-Fi and those kind of things. So um, we, we needed some, um, we need to put some effort in um, explanation of those, um, the, 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 the preliminary things. Um, in terms of the appliances, uh, all users have washing machine and dishwasher. Um, and 62.5% uh, of the participants have tumble dryer. Um, so some of the uh, features of the uh, appliances and the solar panels, you can see from here, um, most of the users have solar panel capacities between five to seven kilowatt, um, which is uh, common for a residential scenario. Uh, though one user has, um, a very higher solar panel capacity greater than nine kilowatt. Um, the typical washing machine start time um, used by um, most of the users is like any time in the morning uh, with no like specific preference on the operating time of the washing machine. Um, the uh, washing machine of the users that we considered, um, their energy consumption is in the range of um, uh, between one to three kilowatt hours with um, most users um, having the, the, the cycle power less than one kilowatt hour. The typical wash duration for most users was one to two hours. And this slide shows you um, the key features of the dishwasher. Um, the uh, dishwasher typical start times for most users is um, late night to early morning, 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. time period. Um, and the um, energy consumption of most of the dishwashers um, were in the range less than 1,000 watts for the cycle power. Um, and the typical wash duration um, that was, um, was in the range of um, less than um, one hour for some people, but for most people, it is one to two hours, which can be expected. Um, then for the tumble dryer uh, features, um, the start times for the tumble dryer is mostly uh, 3 to 5 p.m. for most users, though so some users are using um, during the um, early morning um, or um, um, afternoon periods between um, 5 a.m. to 3 p.m. 
the energy consumption of the tumble dryer was quite high. Uh, it can be from 1,000 to um, 4,000 watt or more than that. Um, though uh, for most users, it was um, um, it was between this range, 1,000 to 3,000 watt. Um, the typical duration um, was um, um, one to two hours for most people, as you can see. Um, so these are some of the uh, key features that we collected from another set of questionnaires um, from our participants, um, because we wanted to know how their appliances are operating, what energy consumption they have, um, how long they will operate, and when do they normally turn on the appliances. So we try to capture the user behavior, the user energy consumption behavior through these statistics. We also collected the information about the, uh, the typical electricity demand of the users. So um, this will be the average demand profile of all those eight participants. Um, and you can see that some users will have um, this um, evening peak and some users will have this um, early morning peak around 5 a.m. or then around 5 p.m. Okay, so this was our average demand profile based on the information uh, of the user demand between 2019 to 2021, which we used to, um, to inform our study that how the typical user demand looks like. And um, if we alter the energy consumption of um, a certain appliance, how this might affect this overall demand profile. So this is the gross demand profile without taking into account the solar generation. Um, and uh, uh, this is the peak demand uh, scenarios the, um, for, for all the participants. So uh, as you can see that this peak demand varies uh, between 0.5 to up to 1.3 uh, kilowatts uh, for some users. And um, the occurrence of the peak demand, when do they occur? during the time for different participants. Um, you can see that for uh, some participants, it occurs during the evening, um, late afternoon time period, 7.30 p.m. or 5.30 p.m., 5 p.m. And for some other users, the peak demand is in the early morning period, such as 5 a.m. or 7.30 a.m. So um, um, you'll notice that here we have uh, we have specified the participants with their IDs, uh, which starts with participant three, um, participant four, participant five in that way. Uh, we, don't, we don't have the other participants. Um, so the, the IDs, when we apply them to the users, uh, this was from the original scenario where we have all the 20 users, but then um, not all of them could participate um, uh, in our study. So we continued with that, um, whatever um, the IDs we have. Okay, so um, this was the big demand. So this slide shows you the conceptual model. Um, so we have uh, the weather forecasts from the external server. Um, which is uh, uh, communicated with the um, with the uh, intelligent devices within the houses, which can be a microcontroller. And this microcontroller then computes optimal decisions to turn on uh, or turn off the smart plugs here. And then these smart plugs um, will then turn on the devices. So that was the basic idea um, of this energy optimization, um, energy optimization tool or energy optimization prototype. And this is the uh, broad architecture of our solution. So um, we have weather forecasts from a platform 
which uh, are stored in the secured file server. And from the secured file server, um, the weather data is read by the Raspberry Pi microcontroller, which computes um, what should be the best time to operate a certain uh, appliance within the day. And then it uh, stores these optimization outcomes again in that secured file server. In the morning, the microcontroller will send some SMS notification to the users, um, showing that like how um, they should turn on their appliances at different times of the day. And um, according to this optimum appliance schedules, the Raspberry Pi microcontroller will turn on the smart plugs. Uh, and then these smart plugs will uh, turn on the end user appliance, whether it's a washing machine or dishwasher and so on. So this is the brief uh, solution architecture. So during the trial, each household received a Raspberry Pi microcontroller and a smart plug, which turns on an appliance during a certain time at the day as um, computed by the microcontroller. Uh, and these solutions are computed on a day ahead basis. So usually uh, later at the night um, around uh, 11 p.m. or so uh, for the next day. Uh, and they use weather forecasts from a secure file server. And we also needed the historical demand data, which we previously downloaded from the PowerCore My Energy portal. Um, so at the morning, early morning, around 5 a.m., the participants are notified about uh, the best time to operate their washing machine, dishwasher, and tumble dryer. Um, and uh, they would also get notified about whether there is a chance of rain, uh, which might help them to uh, think about whether they want to um, use their washing machine or not. Um, the pilot continued for at least two months for each participant, and the trial. Uh, it took place between the time period February to October in 2022. Um, the reason why we took uh, a longer time period than two months for overall uh, is because uh, the uh, the council wanted us to like try this um, uh, prototype uh, for the houses one by one. So first we try with one house, and after it is completed, then we try with another house and so on. So. That's why it took a bit, bit of time um, to complete. Um, another thing to note is that the users are given the option to override the optimal schedules. Um, the users uh, were given instruction that they can turn off the smart plug or turn on the smart plug by themselves. Um, and then that way they can override the schedules if they need to. But we have also requested the users that, if possible, stick with the optimum schedule so that um, we can we can identify whether our algorithm was successful to achieve the savings in energy consumption. A note about our weather forecast method. Um, so our approach uses forecasts generated by National Aeronautical Information Processing System, which uses weather forecasts from the nearest airport, that is Avalon. And this is the forecast used by um, BOM as well. And we also utilize temperature forecasts of Geelong from uh, Willy Weather to improve our accuracy. These forecasts are generated at around 11 p.m. for the next 24 hours. And we also tell to the users about um, if there is a chance of rain. Um, this, uh, we are planning to improve this weather forecast method further by using a cloud movement sensor, which, um, which can predict the um, predict the movement of cloud ahead of time and which will be helpful in uh, finding out the solar irradiation more accurately. And we plan to consider this improved forecast in our future studies. So what does our prototype include? It includes a Raspberry Pi 3B microcontroller and a TP-Link CASA HS110 smart plug. Um, so at this stage, we controlled uh, only one appliance, which is the washing machine, but we could also uh, control the dishwasher or tumble dryer, uh, but we could not do um, multiple appliances at the same time. 
uh, though we plan to extend this for uh, multiple appliances simultaneously in future studies. Um, for sending text notification to the users, we use Ponage API um, and uh, the text messages were sent from the Raspberry Pi microcontroller to, to the participants' uh, mobile, mobile phones directly. And the prototype uses home Wi-Fi to connect um, and the control operation is executed completely locally within the household. So we do not have a remote control in this case. The control is done locally. Uh, this is uh, one important feature of our prototype. So it basically communicates with the uh, external servers for uh, weather forecasts, um, and that's a secured file server again. Um, but other than that, um, all the uh, computation is done locally within the Raspberry Pi, um, and the control is also within the household. So there is no other external thing uh, involved within uh, there, there is no cloud-based control here. Um, another uh, interesting feature is that this solution does not cost more than 200 AUD. However, there can be some ongoing costs uh, for maintenance. Uh, if something goes wrong, let's say the smart plug is not operating or the Raspberry Pi has turned off or it is not connect getting connected with the network, uh, then someone will have to go and look uh, look what's happening so there there might be some costs on that and also like uh, if the user wants to receive text notification there is a cost of using that um, api for text messages so i have uh, uh, included a short um, video here um, for uh for showing us like how this approach will work this is a conceptual video, uh, not an exact video, because then I'll have to wait for um, a couple of hours to to uh, to show how it, it it looks like when it's working in the uh, real time system. Um, so, hope you can get this sound. if it is not working. Yeah, I'm not sure why the video is not working. If you cannot hear the voice um, uh, of the video, uh, just let me know, uh, I'll check again. I can't hear the voice. Okay, uh, sorry. Then I think I'll have to reshare with the sound. Uh, give me uh, one moment. Uh, um, yeah. uh, I think I have shared the... Over the night, um, the Raspberry Pi at your home Good. will be the optimum oh, uh, operating schedules for the appliances. Now the sun is up and shines through the day. Now is the time for your solar panels to heat up. Let's say your solar panels are producing enough energy to heat up the appliances at your home. And some optimum operating schedules are um, sent to you via text notification. As you can see that the optimum operating time for washing machine is shown as 10 a.m. Let's say you have a washing machine connected with a smart plug, which can make sure that your washing machine turns on just at the right time. Now it's 10 a.m. Now your smart plug will be turned on by the optimization algorithm so that your washing machine is ready to use the optimum time. So that was like uh, just a conceptual video, like how this uh, approach will work and so on. Um, so now let's have a look uh, uh, what benefits uh, we had like after implementing this project through some of these evaluation results. 
So uh, this figure that I'm showing here is uh, the net energy consumption for the participant number five. Um, and this uh, shows you the comparison of the energy consumption between 11th March to 12th May. So the blue graph shows before optimization and the orange graph uh, is the after optimization. So one is the 2021 when we did not have this control and when we have uh, the optimi optimization prototype here in 2022. And you can see that um, the demand, um, the net energy consumption has been reduced uh, significantly. Um, these morning peaks are now much smaller. Um, and uh, we could shift many of our uh, energy usage to this uh, high solar generation time periods. And as a result, you can see that uh, the reverse power flow, um, it reduced during 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. time period, uh, where there was uh, a much longer time period of reverse power flow here uh, in 2021. Um, the net energy consumption decreased by 1.5 kilowatt hours. So originally it was 5.3 kilowatt hour. And then after uh, installing the controls, it was 3.8 kilowatt hours. So if you, um, take the difference between these two and divide it by um, the original amount, then you get this 38.8% savings on an average day. Um, so if you, if you compute the savings for um, multiple days, you can, you can then identify like how much more savings you can uh, achieve. Uh, I have not calculated the cost savings here, but you can, um, you can readily multiply your, um, your electricity tariff with this 1.5 kilowatt hour to get an idea that how much will be the savings for a single day, for a month, for a year, and so on. Um, we also noticed that the peak demand decreased by 48%, which is equivalent to 0.62 kilowatt hour, and the peak shifted from 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. Uh, that morning peak is now here, um, though we cannot see it here because um, um, it is now now covered by the solar generation and because we are showing you the net energy consumption here. Um, and then what is the optimal operating time of the washing machine for different participants? Uh, we have shown some slides to show you those results. Um, in some, for some of the participants, there is a clear um, uh, best time for using the, uh, the, the washing machine. For example, for participant three, um, we found out that the best time in most cases is 9.30 a.m., uh, where the preferred time was 9 a.m. So you, you can see that the, um, the optimal time and the preferred time were pretty much close. Um, and some of the users may already be using their appliances quite thoughtfully, um, which might be reflected in this scenario. Um, this Participant uh, is operating the washing machine in 43 days during the optimal times. In some days, the participant will not use washing machine. In some days, uh, the participant may not be at home or they might be using it in a different time because of their other commitments and so on. Um, and these results are based on the trial continued between March to July in 2022 for participant three. Um, and this one shows you uh, the optimal times for participant 10. And clearly you can see that 11.30 a.m. was uh, the, the more, more frequently, the most frequently selected optimal time um, by the algorithm for participant 10. And the participant's actual preferred time was 11 a.m. So they're again, uh, very much in, 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 uh, in symphony. So um, this trial was between April to September, uh, which is pretty much uh, the winter or early spring time period. And uh, the participant uh, operated the washing machine in 69 days during the optimal times. Um, in some cases, uh, we got two different times, which can be equally good or um, nearly equally good. For example, in this case, uh, for participant four, um, it can be uh, in some in in some days the algorithm decided that 10:30 a.m. is the best time to use the washing machine, where, whereas in other days it decided 11:30 a.m. 
whereas the participants prefer time less than AM. And this trial was between May to September, among which 53 days uh, were used by the, um, the user uh, during optimal times. Another case with two different times is uh, this um, participant 12. We can see that 9.30 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Uh, both are um, chosen nearly equally by the algorithm um, for the as the best time to operate the washing machine. Um, and this trial was between February to May. Uh, and in this case, the participant preferred time was 11 a.m., but the earlier time period was selected by the um, by our algorithm. This could be because um, the trial started in late February, or, or uh, and and even during that time period, it was end of summer or the beginning of autumn. So even during that time, the um, the early morning periods may have a better solar generation. So um, that's why uh, the the washing machine optimal time is selected um, earlier in the day rather than later in the day. Um, in some of the cases, the uh, the algorithm uh, uh, selected an optimal time for uh, a wider range of time. For example, with for participant five, you can see that um, in some days um, it's selected 9 a.m. In some other days, 10 a.m or some days 12 p.m., um, but mostly during the early morning periods um, for, for the user. Um, for uh, participant five, the preferred time was 9 a.m., and uh, you can see that it was either 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. as decided by the algorithm. And um, if you also remember, this participant five has uh, um, a, an early morning peak which could also be a reason like why um, um, this, um, uh, the appliances are, are, are scheduled during um, a different time periods of the day. Um, and this trial also continued between March to May, which is kind of the um, late summer, early autumn period. And there is, here is another case for participant nine which also um, con uh, conti continued between uh, April to August, the winter time period. In this case, uh, the user has a preferred time as uh, 10 a.m., but you can see that most of the days uh, as computed by the algorithm, the um, optimal time was selected as 12.30 p.m. It could be because of the uh, winter period where um, the, the sunshine is usually at a later time period of the day. Um, and another thing could be because this participant operated the washing machine um, in only 21 days, um, and it may not be reflected, we may not have sufficient data to reflect that kind of um, uh, insight, as we can see from the other cases. Um, we did not show the results for two more users because of insufficient data. In some cases, users may not be using the smart plug um, uh, as we as we have uh, suggested them to use um, and may not be using washing machine because of unavailability or some other reasons. Um, however, uh, by um, seeing that key results uh, from our evaluation, we have realized that um, the uh, one of the significant benefits of our uh, algorithm will be the reduction in energy consumption. And it can be used for peak shaving applications in residential energy consumption. Um, this can reduce the reverse power flow and ensure less stress on the electricity network assets uh, and can cause co benefit for the distribution network operators. Um, and through this trial, as we communicate with the different participants, we suggested that these notifications of the optimal operation times uh, help them to modify their consumption behavior and um, they are now thinking more about how they can better use the energy, which is um, which is a very exciting thing uh, for me because I, I never realized that how um, notifying the users about their energy consumption can can cause such a big change in their energy consumption behavior. Um, 
uh, the tool also demonstrates how solar generation can be best utilized um, by suggesting um, uh, strategies to the users by um, promoting more self-consumption. And uh, in, a, in that way, um, we, we promote the uptake of solar panels um, as people will be able to see how solar generation can help them um, the, reduce their energy costs. Um, it also has a quicker return of investment, which will be less than two years. Um, as we already said that it is a very low cost uh, solution um, in our earlier slides. Some of the challenges that we faced during the implementation. Um, the first uh, challenge was when our equipment got changed. Uh, initially, we planned to use iTrans IoT development board, but they were originally in, in USA and they could not arrive due to shipment delays uh, during COVID. So we have to change our solution to Raspberry Pi boards instead. But remember that uh, we can extend that, this approach to any other um, any other microcontroller type. So there is uh, no such limitation that we have to use this one or that one. We also had uh, delays due to equipment delivery uh, and some other things and the testing got delayed. And as a result, we could not approach the participants before 2022. Um, and due to these delays, many participants' uh, circumstances change, as you can imagine. Um, some people have moved out of houses and their new houses uh, do not have solar panels. And by the time the solar panels installed, our project has may have finished or so on. And, and as a result, some of them were not more, anymore available for the study. And some people may have chosen um, another energy efficiency solution and may not have the time to, to test another, uh, our, our uh, optimization solution. So things happen like that. And um, that was uh, another challenge that we faced. Um, um, and apart from these delays, there another challenge that we had is the access of the data. Uh, initially, requested users to share their half-hourly generation and demand data, uh, but many of them were not aware that um, they they could have downloaded this from the My Energy portal. Uh, some of them requested their retailers, and in some cases, um, um, they gave me the access from the retailer as well. But not all retailers were happy to share and. Uh, it, it was a bit of challenge, but then later on we we managed to uh, download the data and, um, and and get the access of the user demand data, uh, the, the historical demand data that we needed for our um, optimization solution. Um, and apart from those challenges of the implementation, some other limitations of our approach is that we need to use the home Wi-Fi. Uh, which means that if there is any network outage, then uh, it will cause an issue with the operation of the smart plug. It, uh, the, the Raspberry Pi might turn off or um, may get disconnected from the network and um, someone will have to restart so that um, the microcontroller can again then uh, talk to the network. Um, another thing is we already mentioned the accuracy of weather forecasts. Um, which depends on the bomb forecasts and may not be highly accurate, um, as you can imagine, uh, especially for uh, an area like Geelong, where we have four seasons in a single day. Um, uh, another thing is washing machine dishwashers. Uh, they have electronic switches. Um, these are not uh, same as the mechanical switches. So someone has to be at home to turn them on manually, though the smart plugs uh, will turn on automatically. Now, uh, we, we could um, avoid that limitation by using IoT-enabled um, washing machine or dishwashers, but many users will not have them. They're still not that cheap that everyone will have them. So um, at this stage, um, we needed someone to turn them on manually during that optimal time. But if it comes to the turning off uh, scenario, the smart lock can readily turn that off. Um, and uh, let's say the smart plug is moved by the user to another appliance, the algorithm won't be optimal anymore because the algorithm was trained for that specific appliance, assuming that the smart plug is connected to, to that specific appliance. Um, if the smart plug is moved to a different one, um, then uh, the 
the, the way it is trained and the way it is being operated, they won't match with each other and then uh, the results won't be optimal. So um, uh, the next steps, um, as the next steps, we are planning to extend this algorithm for heating cooling appliances such as air conditioners, heaters, or hot waters, um, which we could not do at this stage, um, and uh, how we can incorporate battery storages in the algorithm. This is another thing we want to um, explore in our future um, implementation stage. Um, also, how we can control multiple appliances at the same time through multiple smart plugs. That is uh, something we would like to do. And some uh, our users uh, have um, also gave us feedback about like whether uh, we can provide a, a range of operating periods rather than a single start time that will be more flexible for them. For example, if we can say that, OK, 10.30 uh, AM is the best time, but the second best time is 11.30 AM, and the third best time is 12.30 PM, then um, that kind of range gives the users more flexibility. So this is something which uh, we may be able to accommodate quite easily and um, plan to do that in the next iteration. Um, and also like how we can integrate um, this application with our existing smart metering platform. Um, you, may, you may be aware of that, that smart meters um, uh, can, um, can have an application in them like any other smart devices, such as your mobile phone. Um, currently, these type of smart meters are being, man being manufactured. And uh, when we have them, um, it might be useful to uh, integrate this application within the smart meter itself, rather than depending on um, a third party microcontroller. Um, and finally, um, I'm looking for. Uh, extending this algorithm to community facilities such as community buildings and libraries, which has much higher energy consumption because of heating, cooling, and how the um, energy optimization can help them. So currently, I'm looking for um, further funding um, to execute this, um, the next steps or, or the, ne the next stages of our implementation study, and um, hopefully, um, we will be able to improve it further. Um, and um, I'm, I'm hopeful that this kind of uh, prototype can be commercially available um, within the next four or five years. So I would like to um, stop talking about uh, what uh, we have found in the project and what we did. And I'm happy to take some questions from you. Um, but if you um, also want to get more information about the project or um, want to continue the discussion, please feel free to send me an email, which is uh, my email address is here. Um, thanks, everyone. Um, I'm, I'm ready to take any questions. Thank you, Shama. That was very good. And shall we look at the questions? So what's the use of clothes dryer versus outdoors clothes line? included in the washing machine usage calculations. Washing machine gains could be wiped out if a dryer was used instead of an outside clothesline. Um, thanks for the question. Uh, we did consider that thing. Um, what will be the difference if the user does not have a tumble dryer or if the user has a tumble dryer? So uh, as I said, like some users have them and some users may not have them. So uh, for users uh, who does not have a tumble dryer, we used to, um, for all the users, we, we have notified them about the best time, uh, like oh, the time when there is uh, no rain happening. So we, we do consider the time periods when rain can happen or rain will not happen uh, and take that information in our optimization. Um, so this is, uh, this is definitely included. Um, uh, but yeah, in some cases, people already have dryers and they might want to use them um, rather than the, uh, the, the, the drying line. Yeah. Yep, fair enough. And from Grace, did you consider turning on and off the hot water system using the algorithm? Thanks, Grace, for your question. 
Um, as I mentioned that at this stage, we have considered only washing machine, dishwasher, and tumble dryer, but we, um, we are working on that uh, hot water system, um, how to optimally use that, and we are planning to extend uh, in the next stage. Um, but uh, not many people uh, in, uh, in our study has uh, electric hot water system, so we did not consider that as a priority, but uh, I'm happy to consider that in the next, uh, next iteration of the project. Good, and um, please start putting your questions in if anybody's got more questions. I think a few have been answered directly by um, one of my compatriots. So, um, so the next stage, you know, you getting more Geelong Council is not very fluid with money at the moment. Is there other sources you are hoping to get access to? Yeah, I'm, I'm exploring other sources um, and um, there, um, uh, I have, uh, I've also talked about this project um, uh, in the National Energy Efficiency Conference last month, and there were some uh, government officials from the New South Wales who, who were very interested about this project, and they were more, more keen because um, they have that time of use tariff in some places, and uh, they're also um, uh, thinking about the hot water systems much more, and um, they were they were asking about these questions as well, like um, whether we have used the time of use, tariff structure, hot water systems, and so on. So I guess there is an interest of um, uh, extending this algorithm for uh, uh, other applications and other, um, other uh, appliances. Yeah. And it seems to be a reasonable price because a lot of the systems are around, which you don't know they do, much more than yours does, seem very expensive. This, that would be a fair assessment, would it? This yeah, I mean, uh, our solution is based on a, a, uh, on a uh, readily available microcontroller from, this, from the uh, market. But in the future, if we can integrate this um, solution uh, in a smart metering platform, probably we would... Um, we would need to rely much less on the hardware side of the thing, and that can be more advantageous. And the smart meter, some smart meter manufacturers are willing to to get involved with that and are interested. Um, yes, uh, I mean, um, I'm I'm collaborating with Itron, and um, they have a plan to uh, incorporate those kind of smart meters. Um, but these are. Uh, in discussion with the network operators whether they want to have them or not. Yeah, good. Um, I think Grace has asked another question. Uh, That's what appliances nice. uh, we plan to optimize in community building? Uh, Grace, it will be the, uh, the heat and cooling appliances, mainly the, the air conditioners, uh, uh, heaters. Um, but I think um, if, the, if the building has a hot water system, I would also like to consider that in my um, optimization tool. Um, I have a battery in my house, um, which is only small. Um, so I'd like to optimize that during the winter period. In summer, it doesn't really matter because mm -hmm. um, it carries me through the night quite happily. But um, yeah. I want to carry through. I'm on time of use as well. Mm -hmm. So you could include the battery in that mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can also do that. Um, uh, I, I did not have many participants with battery storages. So again, I decided I decided like not to consider this at this at this time. But we do have the provision for including those uh, in our algorithm. So we we de originally developed our algorithm for many different scenarios. But then when we saw that um, we may not need everything at this stage, we decided not to uh, fine tune them any anymore and like decide only on the ones that we have currently in hand. And how does it do the calculation when you've got multiple appliances? So there's multiple things you can turn on and off. What yeah, we, we choose to, to optimize them? the highest consumption, uh, highest consumption appliance first. So for users with tumble dryers, obviously that's the first thing we have to optimize, but then we have to keep in mind that the dryer will have to operate after the washing machine. 
So yeah, there is a um, there are some conditions that we have to apply in our algorithm, which which will take these things into uh, account. Okay, and there's another question come up. Does mm -hmm. every appliance require a smart plug at the power outlet, and what's the cost of these? Mm -hmm. And does that smart plug take up extra space, so preventing access to the second socket access? The picture you showed seemed to show that the free socket was partly obscured, and so making it unusable. Uh, yes, I completely agree with what you are saying. Um, yeah, uh, it, it can cause that issue that um, it can have um, an access issue to the second socket. We could provide with um, um, a multi-plug or something in that case, and um, maybe like uh, avoid that issue. Um, but for the purpose of the trial, we, we just focused on giving one smart plug to the users. Um, however, if we want to control multiple appliances, we will need multiple smart plugs um, for each one of them because uh, a single smart plug won't be able to control multiple appliances at the same time, um, the way it operates. Um, however, there can be like smart plug strips uh, where um, I have seen uh, some products in the market that has multiple outlets and um, but then the question will be, you may not have your washing machine, uh, dishwashers, everything in the same place. So it, it may not be possible. Uh, so the, there, there are these kind of discussions that we have to think about um, before before planning to the next stage. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Um, From Alex. Then... Yep. Yeah. From Alex, did you consider the matter in the development? this could reduce the costs as existing gateways could be upgraded. It could be an alternative and more internationally applicable solution compared to the smart meters. Matter is a collaboration between many IoT device items, such mm -hmm. as Samsung, Apple, Google, Schneider Electric, Hire, as many more. Uh, thanks, Alex, for your question. Um, uh, yeah, I, I believe that um, there can be alternative ways to solve this problem. Um, but the reason why we wanted to use the smart meters is because like they're already in our homes and we are not creating something new. Uh, that was the main motivation for considering uh, smart meters to host this kind of application. We could not do it at this stage um, because still now uh, we are using um, a Raspberry Pi microcontroller to do it, but then um, in the future, we might be able to have those kind of smart meters where we can directly um, um, install this application as, um, as a mobile application. Um, so yeah, um, I mean, but there can be definitely alternative approaches. Um, and uh, there can be other states where we don't have smart meters and definitely in those cases, having, um, uh, other IoT platforms will be, uh, can be much more cost effective, definitely. I would agree with that. Good, another question for me. Is there a big difference between winter and summer on the decisions made? Um, we could not really test during the summer period. Um, our testing mainly happened in the winter. It's not that we wanted to do it like that. Uh, our original plan was to do it in the summer, but then due to delays and uh, some other things, some personal things change and uh, we had to do it in the in the winter in 2022. Um, in summer, I think the, uh, the optimal times might change uh, because of the solar generation profile. Um, you may have a different demand profile, net demand profile during winter and summer because how the um, solar generation is taking place in, in different seasons. There, there, there is definitely uh, an impact of seasonality, but um, yeah, and, and uh, it, it would be nice if we could conduct this, um, um, this, this implementation over the summer as well. Yeah, I imagine the cap, well, the results might be the same, but the, the timing will be dramatically different, I think. I notice with my system, it's mm -hmm. very different in summer than in winter. Yeah, yeah. How about including EVs? Can you put that into the system too? Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, 
we did not have, as you can imagine, we did not have any, enough participants with, who has electric vehicles, but that's another thing we are planning to consider in our uh, next step of the project. Um, that if the user has an electric vehicle, we can consider that, um, consider the demand of the electric vehicle without considering the vehicle to grid uh, operation, but because that's, that's a different story. Um, but we, we can consider the demand of the electric vehicles and like when this is being charged and then how it is going to change our demand profile. Because if some user is trying to charge this electric vehicle during um, daytime or maybe um, during nighttime, then how, how it affects the optimal solution. There is definitely value uh, in looking into these alternatives. And can you uh, extend it so that the EV could actually be providing power? Could that come into your calculations? So um, the EV supplies power to the house? Yeah, I think currently we do, don't have the uh, vehicle to grid uh, kind of scenarios and um, I'm not sure if you're uh, um, if we should connect the electric vehicle battery to to charge our other uh, to to provide power to our other appliances if if that is a good idea or not. Um, so I, I think um, at this stage I would only consider it as a load. Um, but over the time when we have more matured solutions with vehicle to grid operation, V two G operation, then. Um, obviously, we can consider it as a source rather than a load, uh, just a load. Yeah. Another question is, have you considered testing the use of the smart plug and notification technology against concurrent controls versus the historical data, which seems to be the control for this project? Um, so um, we did not have any demand forecast uh, integrated at this stage, uh, but we do have uh, uh, demand forecasting algorithms which we are able to integrate. Um, and uh, perhaps in a future iteration, we will be able to use the demand forecast rather than the historical data um, uh, based on that. Uh, but uh, it, it's not just the uh, historical data. We are also considering uh, the weather forecasts and based on that we are choosing like what time will be the best for users to operate and then um, for our evaluation mechanism we are trying to compare uh, before and after uh, like 2021 and 2022's consumption um, to, to get an idea like uh, whether things have changed because of our um, because of our technology yep Good. Has anybody else got any more questions? That includes Chris and Howard. Hmm? Seems to me there's lots and lots of opportunities here. That's, uh, and we need to do this quickly. Um, so I think that's the challenge. Challenge for you, really. Challenge for us to try and support you to do it. Um, <laughs> The potential benefits, I think, are huge, but it's how do we get it off the ground as quickly as we can? Yeah. yeah. Actually, I was wondering whether any electricity companies are interested in your work. Um, uh, uh, the network operators uh, may not be that interested because their main focus is not the um, end users. Uh, they're more interested in maintaining their assets uh, and so on. Um, but the smart metering companies, uh, they have an interest because um, this application can, can readily uh, integrate with the smart meters, so they definitely have some interest in, in this project. Maybe AMO or other controlling bodies could be interested, particularly yeah, in moving yeah, load around. Yeah. The thing is that when it comes to residential energy consumption, because the scale is less, um, Many times uh, people see that uh, people don't see the value in it. But actually, if you think about, you have this many number of users in a certain suburb in a certain city, um, then th then that um, that savings will definitely be very useful. So I guess the mindset uh, also um, has a role to play here, how they are looking into this problem. Yep. 
Right, well, thank you for that, all the questions. Before I actually thank you, just a bit of, of our business items. Um, this is our first one from New Melbourne, first webinar for quite a while. Um, so we're quite keen to continue with them. Um, so if people are, think it's a good idea and would like to help, we're very keen to have your input, um, either for ideas on what to talk about or uh, doing a specific task on an evening or ongoing. Uh, let Chris know if you're interested in helping. Um, Renew wants to remind us that uh, they have a tax deductible end of year uh, donations program. So um, if you would like to help Renew out, we'd certainly like that. Um, we're planning a meet our next meeting in August, which we're hoping will be a combined um, RMIT in-person event and also uh, webinar. Um, we're just going through all the challenges with the uni on that at the moment, but we'll keep you informed about that. Um, and after shortly, we'll put up a poll for um, what you thought about tonight and ideas and such like. Uh, uh, so uh, that would be good. Um, well, thank you, Charlotte. It's a great analysis. And I think there's great opportunities there. We can get it moving, as I say, quicker and more extensively. Thanks um, for giving me the opportunity to talk about this. It was a pleasure. Right, no, it was great. Um, and uh, I always feel a bit sad on these Zoom meetings that you can't see all the people and hear them all clapping and such like. So thank you from me and thank you from all of us here. Uh, it's been a great night. Thanks. Thanking you. And to everybody else, there'll be a, a, um, a poll coming up shortly.